Speaking your mind, especially within the realm of social media, always carries a risk. We speak to blogger Koketso Sidris about cancel culture for the record. Cancel culture, originally, it was supposed to be um, a form of social justice or mob justice, if you like, um, where public figures or brands or companies are held accountable for whatever offensive actions they may have done or offensive words they may have uttered to a group of people or to a person or just anything that may be deemed unacceptable in society. Media contributes a lot to um, how people are perceived, especially when they're being cancelled. For example, when you look at the whole Jada and Will Smith um, saga that's going on, the Will Smith slap, um, Jada and Will have been in the media for quite a while now, and the media is portraying Jada in a very bad light, um, that this goes all the way back to the whole entanglement thing. Um, they're portraying Jada in a very bad light about how she's not a fit wife and um, all these bad things, to, they have all these bad things to say about her. And that contributes a lot because social media trolls, they thrive off negativity. And even if it's not true, they will eat it right up because that's that's what they like that's what they like to see and that's what they like they like to spread the misinformation and um so media does play a huge role in um what people spread on social media let's talk about the dangers that are associated with cancel culture what are they well people can pretty much lose their, their livelihoods because of cancel culture because it can start with you losing your gigs because of you're being cancelled and that trickles down to now you can't do your job anymore now you're not getting the money that you need in order to survive and even just like your street cred just your connections you lose your connections because you are now deemed in a certain way and there's a lot that comes with it with cancel culture, which you wouldn't want to be on the receiving end of. Can anything be done to those who mislead others under the banner of cancel culture? In a practical sense, I don't think much can be done because a lot of them are even operating behind um, burner accounts and operating in untraceable manners. So I don't know what, if practically, anything could be done to them. However, I do think that the culture around cancel culture could be changed um, in terms of um, how people approach it because I feel like with cancel culture, people approach it in a very black or white manner. And it, cancel culture is complex because humans are complex. Um, as much as you love that actor, he's very talented and you love their work and everything. He may be a bad person in his personal life. He may do things that you, would, you don't necessarily agree with. So where do you draw the line? Because that doesn't take away from him being a talented actor. So what I'm trying to say is that cancel culture should maybe be approached from a different perspective, that in a way where there's room for forgiveness because if you cancel someone, for something that he did, do you does that mean he must be completely be completely cut cut off um, in the industry that that person may be working in, or do you forgive and let them learn and grow because they may have said something five years ago, but no one is the same person as they were five years ago, whether you like it or not, and that would show that there's no growth and there is no life. So I would say that the, the approach should change to cancel culture. So say you find yourself in an unfortunate predicament where you've been caught up in the cancel culture frenzy. What can you do as the individual 
to mitigate the negativity that's going to come out of it. I feel like we would need to start with, are you guilty of whatever you're being accused of? If you are, then I guess you would have to deal with it and um, take accountability and I guess try to correct whatever wrong you made. However, I would also say that if you're not guilty and you're being wrongfully accused, be as honest as possible and try and understand what you are being accused of, how try and see it from that other person's point of view, why they think you are being that way. And after that, apologize if you need to, um, but just make sure that your actions are in alignment with what you said in your apology or whatever it is that you represent. I think that would be a good place to start. <laughs> For anyone who wants to hold people accountable for their actions using cancel culture, what would you say to them? I would say that they should approach it from a human perspective. They are also human and they also make mistakes. And so I would say they should approach it from a point of, a forg of forgiveness, um, but also context matters because sometimes people are being canceled for something they said in 2005, but remember society was like, they were saying it to the people in that society when it was maybe acceptable. And although we may not see it as acceptable today, um, that doesn't mean, and I mean, I'm not saying it makes it right that it's not a, it, that they said that thing and just because it was acceptable then doesn't mean that it's okay that they said it, but context does matter because that it, that changes the, the tone of what was being said. Um, if they said it today, then we'd understand why they're getting all that backlash. Um, so people should just really look into the whole context of what is being handled and also approach it with grace because we make mistakes here or there and they are not holier than the next person just because they're calling that person out. Um, that's what I would say. And also if you're reading it from a tabloid um, or TMZ or whatever, not to name, um, name drop, but if you're reading it from tabloid sources, then it most probably isn't true. But if you're reading it from a trusted source, then I guess you can do whatever you want to from that point on.